Trade unions and the human rights organization support of the Palestinian cause is of high value in order to press the Israeli occupation to stop its violations and aggressions against the Palestinians. This really what happens when it comes to the relationship between Palestine and the trade unions in Britain and Europe in general. For more on this topic, I have with me Mr. Nigel Falangani from London, who is activist in the trade unions and a strong supporter of the Palestinian and the Palestinian cause. Welcome to our program, Mr. Nigel. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Nigel, uh, the, the, the support by the grassroots organizations and the trade unions for the Palestinian people in their struggle for independence and justice is of high value. How do you evaluate the activism and support provided by trade unions in Britain and the grassroots organizations for the Palestinians at these hard times we are going through, really? Well, the, the, the battle is on two levels, really. The first level is in terms of publicity and raising public awareness of what is happening in uh, the West Bank and in particular in Gaza. And in that battle, we are constantly having to use social media and alternative media outlets like yourself in order to get the news to people, to get the information to people about how badly the Israeli government is exploiting and abusing the Palestinian people. Because it's still the case that the Western media are biased and completely in the um, camp of the Israeli government and represent their views, their opinions, their policies in, in a quite disgraceful light, which uh, would lead people to believe that this is kind of like uh, uh, as we say in England, six to one and half a dozen to the other. There's always some kind of equal struggle taking place. So that campaign is ongoing and organisations like the Palestinian Solidarity uh, Campaign are very important in changing the public perception of what is happening in the Middle East. And then the other campaign, which is the campaign of the activists, is to promote and support the disinvestment and boycott campaign against Israel. And that essentially is where we control money in pension funds or in spending. We say we will not use firms that are occupying the West Bank on behalf of the Israeli government. Yes, Mr. So Nigel. Huge, yeah, Mr. Huge Nigel. number of companies like G4S that we are boycotting and disinvesting from. Yeah, and I think that the campaigns should have experienced people, people who have first-hand experience of the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian situation. And you yourself visited Palestine many times, and you visited the Palestinian refugee camps here near uh, Ramallah, Nablus, and Tul Karim. How effective and how efficient was your story back at home to these campaigns and to these grassroots organizations? It's, it, it's very difficult to get any kind of mainstream media presence willing to properly understand and explain what is happening. So we go through our own organisations. In, in my case, the trade union movement is very solidly behind the Palestinian Solidarity campaign. And what they tend to do is say that we will lead the boycott and the disinvestment campaign as well as raising awareness and they send people to the West Bank to meet the communities, to meet the leaders, to discover at first hand what is taking place. So it's very important that we are as active as possible. However, the enemy, if you want to call them that, the people who oppose what we're trying to do are the people who control the media, people who control business, people who control newspapers. And so the battle can seem very, very uneven. But I have to say, the example we are following and the example we want to use is the boycott campaign against apartheid in South Africa. That's the model we are hoping to pursue. Yeah, of course, the importance of the activities of the BDS around the world are, you know, not describable by, by words. 
And you mentioned South Africa. Do you think that this paradigm could be applied to what the Palestinians are going through these days and what the BDS succeeded in against the apartheid system in South Africa could succeed in against the Israeli colonial settler power here in Palestine? Well, I have worked uh, both with Palestinian trade unions and with the South African trade unions. And, and I have a good knowledge from them of how the two systems uh, have operated and how they operate now. And I can only agree with Archbishop Desmond Tutu when he said that this is worse than apartheid South Africa, far worse than apartheid South Africa. And therefore, the conscience of the, uh, the world should be raised up against what the Israeli government is doing. And that campaign of disinvestment and boycotting against South Africa um, was part of the reason, not the whole reason, part of the reason why the South African apartheid government collapsed. Despite having the support of people like President Ronald Reagan and Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, the people still managed to overthrow apartheid and everybody played their part. We want to do exactly the same in Palestine. We want to see a free, democratic, open Palestine for all people. That is the only solution. And that is why we are doing everything we can to support you uh, and your communities and your people. And yeah, having visited Niger. Palestine uh, to work and also um, to play football, I have to say that, that that bond, once it's created, can never be broken. And that's why it's important that we get people to visit Palestine, uh, to meet people and find out what is really happening on the ground. Yeah, Mr. Nigel, my final question to you. Uh, we see that in your political turn in the Middle East and some up governments like the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, a forced normalization deal with the Israeli occupation government. Uh, to what extent do you think this adds to the burden and to the, not burden, let me say, to the mission of the BDS? Because we heard weeks ago that some UAE companies and organizations working with Israeli companies that are acting in the Israeli colonies built in the occupied Palestinian territory. So do you think the BDS will have like an additional mission, not only working in Europe and the Western world, but also to work against the companies here in the United Arab Emirates and some other companies in the Arab world that might think of normalizing and working with Israeli companies. Uh, that is a really, really uh, good uh, point. The, you know, we're clear that the, um, the behavior and the decisions of the United Arab Emirates and any other Arab government that is giving comfort and trying to normalize relationships with Israel is quite simply and quite directly strengthening the Israeli hold over the Palestinian people. There is no other outcome. It doesn't make it easier for Palestinians. It's, uh, if anything, it's speeded up the land grab by the Israeli authorities and made the Palestinian immediate future much, much worse. Our focus will be always on the Israeli government only by putting pressure on the Israeli economy and through that on the government can we make a difference and make some progress in terms of relieving the immediate problems of the Palestinian people. It's probably worse now for the Palestinian people and it has been for a long time. With Trump in power uh, and with the coronavirus outbreak which has had a horrifying effect uh, in the Middle East and now with this betrayal by the um, by certain Arab governments. This is the hardest part. All we can do is intensify our efforts to make sure that the disinvestment and the boycott bites even harder into uh, Israel. And I do think it's significant this year that the whole of the British trade union movement decided at its annual Congress to fully support the boycott and disinvestment campaign against Israel. That's six million trade union members saying enough is enough we don't want to see money invested in israel we don't want to invest in companies that invest in israel we don't want any cultural contacts we don't want concerts or exchanges we don't want academic contacts all that must stop until humanity is restored in the middle east 
Yeah, Mr. Nigel, and the Palestinian people will continue to have hope as long as we have friends like you, supporters of justice and peace. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Nigel. You. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please watch us on our Facebook page, PIP. For now, from me, Osama Nazal, thank you very much for watching and have a nice time. Thank <laughs> you.